Today on BRX TV Tank Trials ULM Edition, it's episode 12. We're talking ULM controllers and then giving away a brand new Neptune Apex for free at the end. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV Tank Trials ULM Edition. Tank Trials is all about taking everything the BRS team and the reefing community knows about a very specific approach to reefing, implementing that knowledge, tracking the progress, and then exploring the results. This is episode 12 of ULM and the development of an ultra-low maintenance system. The goal is a stable, show-caliber reef tank which requires as little maintenance as possible, potentially only performing a few minutes of maintenance a month. Today is all about using technology to reduce maintenance. So far on our reef to reef thread, there's been a really healthy amount of debate as to if controllers and technology really make a tank less maintenance or they just make it more complex. While I was on vacation, Mr. Saltwater shared his ULM thoughts, most of which were related to the Apex, and Richard Ross certainly had a lot to share in relation to how he uses controllers, but what he calls the right kind of lazy. For this episode, I'm going to break from our standard ULM format and just focus on the top five reasons why I think anyone can agree a controller can really make your tank lower maintenance. In my opinion, there's an obvious controller choice for this, and I'm sure that most of you won't be surprised that it's the new Neptune Apex. There are some cheaper options out there. In many ways, the Reef Keeper certainly could be adequate for one of these tanks, but for a ULM, I absolutely need active notifications of issues on my phone or email without complexities like port forwarding. In today's technology era, with some of the more advanced and expensive controller options, I also fully expect to be able to view the tank parameters and equipment status from basically any type of PC, Mac, tablet, or mobile device at home or from the office or even on vacation. But in addition to that, I actually want to be able to perform 95% plus to the programming options and set up tasks from any device as well. I just can't be hauling around a controller to the PC or the PC to the aquarium with a USB connection when I need to make significant changes to the tank or any of the programming. So the Apex just meets my needs and expectations. I did plan on putting something lower cost like a Reef Keeper in at least one of the tanks like the Softy and Polyp tank, but honestly that just doesn't make any sense considering I can use a single Apex to control and monitor all three tanks. So all three tanks will be running off a single Apex with some additional modules for each. I'm going to start this off with the most literal interpretation of how a controller can reduce maintenance automated maintenance. The most obvious being automated water changes. This can be done using a series of bins and level switches, but much more commonly done with highly accurate dosing pumps like the DOS, which simply removes and adds a small portion of water every single day. We've been talking a lot about water changes role in reefing these days and maybe they're not as required with modern methods of reef keeping, but the debate becomes less interesting when water changes become almost effortless. If all I need to do is mix up some salt once a month, it certainly becomes an attractive option for maintaining ultra low contaminants and natural seawater parameters in the tank. Controllers also automate all kinds of calcium and alkalinity maintenance, automating your two-part dose, Kelkwasser stirrer and calcium reactor, providing stable chemistry that's important to a ULM. Related to that, a controller can also serve as an auto top-off to remove the requirement of adding fresh water to replace evaporated water. There are also aquarium controller operated fish food feeders which can be used for standard pellet type foods or even dried particulate based coral foods like reef chili. We had our Neptune dose dosing liquid coral foods like amino acids as well as automating much of the dosing related to KZ's Zeovit program or even automating Avast Marine's Vive automatic Zeovit media shaker. The controller also automates all kinds of maintenance testing with pH probes, ORP, temperature, dissolved oxygen, salinity, and even PAR levels. Internally, we've even discussed using the PAR sensor and monitoring coupled with a testing apparatus to measure the clarity of water or essentially the amount of yellowing pigments. This can let us know when it's time to change the filter media like carbon or potentially even give us a window into the general water quality. However, most notably, the big news is Neptune's new Trident, which should be available in the reasonably near future and capable of monitoring and reporting calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels. You can put down the test kits forever because you're done with them. Honestly, I'm pretty excited about this because there's potential to know your alkalinity levels at many different points throughout the day, meaning that we may very well get a clear window into the rate of calcification and coral growth based on changes in pH, lighting intensity, or even spectrum than we ever had before. In higher demand tanks, it's certainly possible that we can find the exact PAR levels where alkalinity consumption peaks. 
In addition to that, there are a handful of feed and maintenance modes, which with a simple push of a button, trigger any number of actions you might want to happen when you feed the tank or when you want to perform general maintenance. Obvious things like turning on and off pumps, but even more advanced elements like turning on cabinet lights or automatically emptying your skimmer and skimmate receptacle. The second way a controller can make maintenance easier is simple calendar functions and scheduling general maintenance so it actually gets done. When you open up the interface, it will remind you what needs to be done and when, all super easy to set up. You can even add notes for anything that you might have noticed about the tank and when, document and chart any number of parameters within the tank. Most reefers will use this to track alkalinity and calcium trends for sure. That said, number three is probably the biggest one for me related to helping us all maintain a ULM. That's peace of mind when you can't physically put your eyes on the tank or don't have time to check on every last piece of equipment frequently. Peace of mind may not seem like maintenance at first glance, but if I'm spending mental energy worrying about the tank or my home, that's seriously one of the largest and most undesirable tasks. It's perfectly okay to admit that you want a thriving reef tank, but it can't rule your life or be a constant concern. And if technology can help us achieve that safely, then why not? The desire to have an ultra low maintenance tank could simply be because you're lazy, but this really isn't a lazy person's hobby, so it's more likely that there are more common, realistic reasons, like you have a profession or family life that has limited amounts of discretionary time. Maybe you're a doctor or a military officer that can be pulled away at any moment, travel a lot either professionally or personally, seasonally busy, or have a slew of kids running around the house demanding attention or simply because you're a gear junkie and using technology to automate tasks is part of the fun and the hobby. In any case, the less time you spend with the actual tank, the more likely something will go wrong and not be noticed. This is very often the fundamental difference between a one and two year tank and three to 10. Your reef tank is essentially an artificial environment with many components of life support. A whole slew of things will certainly go wrong over the next 10 years. The difference between it being a bump in the road and a major failure is how quickly you're aware and what you can do about it. Once you encounter a few of these issues or know someone who's gone through them, this kind of thing can definitely have the potential to weigh on your mind, even more so if you're away for prolonged periods of time. In fact, many reefers who go on vacation or away from home for longer than a few days will often find a tank sitter of some type to check in on the tank periodically and then train them what to do in case of various emergencies. Finding someone capable of doing this and then getting them up to speed can certainly be a challenge. So letting this all weigh in our minds this way is complete nonsense in my opinion and it doesn't have to be that way. Installed and used properly, a controller can completely free your mind from almost any common tank concern and do it for you. Effortlessly monitoring the tank and equipment, only bothering you when there's a real issue to deal with. You can go away for weeks, potentially even many weeks at a time with near zero concern. This is why peace of mind is the number one and probably the most valuable component of an ultra low maintenance tank. So how does the controller achieve that peace of mind? Well, the Apex can tell you if any number of sensors have detected an issue. pH could indicate a chemistry overdose. Salinity could indicate a leak or top-off failure. Or P could indicate something large died or a whole can of food fell in the tank. Temperature could indicate your home's air conditioner or furnace failed. Dissolved oxygen could indicate your return pump or flow pumps have failed. Floater optical sensors can indicate all kinds of water level issues. Skimmer cup is full, dosing containers are empty. Energy monitoring can tell you pieces of equipment that should be on or off or not. The PAR sensor has the potential to tell you your lighting has failed or changed significantly. Leak sensors can let you know a seal popped or something overflowed and could start damaging your house if it's not cleaned up soon or even a power failure notification where basically the entire life support system is down. Really, if you set the controller up right, it should be able to detect 99.9% .9 of the common issues that reefers run into. Not just that, but the interface can accommodate a camera with a live stream, so even if you don't trust those sensors, you can literally see the tank is healthy and thriving from anywhere in the world. When the inevitable happens and something does go wrong, you get a nearly instant notification of the issue via text messages, push notifications from the app or email, or even localized visual or audible alarms. In most cases, the controller likely turned on or off equipment to handle that situation for you, but if not, you have the option of directly controlling the equipment. Sometimes it's just a setting or adjustment that you need to make, and why it's valuable to be able to do that type of thing remotely from any type of device. Even better, when you're not in town, the admin allows you to give various levels of control to a variety of other people who are in town and can handle the situation. 
More or less in relation to setting up an ultra low maintenance reef tank, this type of thing provides you the time to think about your life and not the tank, sleep at night, go on vacation, take the work trip, spend the weekend just barbecuing and not be overly concerned about any of this because the tank is doing awesome and you have a real time assurance of that. There's peace of mind that when something goes wrong, you'll be notified in a very timely fashion, hopefully with a notification of how your automated solution already handled it for you. Very closely related to that, our number four way a controller can make a tank ULM is power monitoring and actual notification when equipment reaches its end of life. Pumps, heaters, chillers, dosing pumps, fans, lights, power heads, sterilizers, skimmers, everything electrical obviously uses some amount of power when it's turned on. The Apex uses easy task functions to suggest the power ranges a piece of equipment should be consuming and when. If it's not consuming the power it should be, guess what? You know immediately and you can do something about it. This is kind of a game changer because you know the instant it happens, the exact piece of equipment that failed, and not after some sensor has detected chemistry or environment changes that have started to hurt the tank. You might start to see a theme developing here, but the fifth and potentially most valuable reason a controller can help a ULM tank be more successful is the ability to control redundant equipment, often automatically. Heater fails, it fires a backup. Chiller fails, it fires a fan. Return pump fails, the backup turns on. Or a redundant controllable DC pump increases the rate of flow to compensate. Calcium reactor fails, a two-part system can be triggered and engaged. So end of the day, I would never say a controller is a required component of any reef tank, but I really do think it's very valuable for a tank designed to be ultra low maintenance, particularly if that desire for low maintenance is a result of wanting to have an awesome reef tank, but you don't want it to run your life. So as soon as we get all the equipment on the tank and fully set it up, we'll go ahead and share the exact approach to using the Apex in all three tanks with all the settings. So someone out there is going to win one of these for free this week, so click that link in the lower left or head on over the site, click on the specials and deals, and then click free stuff to sign up. Next week we're talking ULM flow. So what does that even mean? How can flow be low maintenance? Well, we're going to dig into that next week. I look forward to hearing what everyone thinks about ULM flow and how they would approach it down in the comments below, as well as over on Reef to Reef and their conversation. As always, if you like what we're doing here, let us know with a quick thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because we release new reefing videos all week long. See you next week with another episode of Beerus TV Investigates ULM Edition.